the premiere of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, a movie that I am really looking forward to, also took place recently at the Cannes Film Festival a couple days ago. And unfortunately, it's not doing very well critically. Currently, it's sitting at a 50% on the tomato meter, making it the first rotten Indiana Jones film, if that score holds. Currently, there's only 30 reviews, and it's at 50%. So it's possible once more reviewers see it and review it, then it goes up. Who knows? But right now it ain't looking good. And this is shocking to me because the fact that, for one, the fact that Disney decided to premiere this film about a month in advance at the Cannes Film Festival, to me, showed that they had incredible confidence in the movie. Um, I, I doubt I didn't think they were going to premiere this thing at the Cannes Film Festival if they didn't think it was going to be well received. Right. Second off, they just hired James Mangold, the director of this movie, to direct one of the upcoming Star Wars films. So that was the second piece of confirmation for me where I was like, okay, that means Dial of Destiny is freaking awesome. Um, they have so much confidence in James Mangold. And not just because of this, but because James Mangold has an incredible uh, incredible filmography. Almost all of his movies are really, really well received critically. Um, he did Ford v. Ferrari, which has a 92%. On Rotten Tomatoes, he directed Logan, which has a 94%. On Rotten Tomatoes, 310 to Yuma, Walk the Line. All of his movies, for the most part, that he directed are very, very well received critically. And he doesn't really have a lot of flops under his belt, right? So I was like, this guy is the perfect choice for this. Logan is proof that he can do kind of a old man action movie good. Um, but apparently not, right? I mean, we'll have to wait till the movie comes out and I'll see it. I'll form my own opinion and give you guys said opinion. But just based on these reviews, it ain't looking pretty. And I was really hoping that the film would be received better than what it's being received as. What were your thoughts on this, Alex? I think it's really easy to say to say why this movie isn't necessarily up to snuff. Um, which is when you're somebody who's making a movie no matter and for one like actually one of his worst reviewed movies night and day is actually kind of fun oh is I that recommend tom it. cruise that was the tom cruise cameron diaz movie i didn't even know he made that i remember when that came out though yeah um i remember i remember that movie was kind of fun uh but uh dial of destiny looks like a i mean Imagine you're in James Mangold's position and you're going on a decades long franchise and you don't want to piss anybody off and you don't want to make something too audacious. Just look at Ryan Johnson had to do with the last Jedi where the last Jedi, like people were saying like, Oh, it's audacious. And then people were so pissed off that they made a safe one with rise of Skywalker. So that's why I, it's, I mean like I, don't envy James Mangold's position because especially if he's looking at what happened to Ryan Johnson, um, because you have to make a safe movie. That's going to appeal to everybody. That's going to be, um, and I don't use the, the word like, as like, it's not going to be offensive, but you have to make a very politically correct. And again, uh, you have to make a very safe movie. Uh, and that's not, and that's, that's like a, that's not necessarily like what breeds good filmmaking. And I think James Mangold at this time is like thinking about like, I think he's like just excited to do his Bob Dylan movie where he gets to do like whatever, where he gets to do like a more audacious film. But I mean, like, and also the other thing is like, you don't have Steven Spielberg's touch you don't have the master's touch. And Steven Spielberg, again, Steven Spielberg owns, if this goes down, and you have to understand is that Khan is a tough crowd. So this, I could see this going into the 60s. Right. Um, I thought the same thing. And as uh, Pepper Dion said, the score was even lower before, like 42%. So you could see that this this score will probably go up. I had an idea for how they could make a successful Indiana Jones 5 a while ago. I don't think that the Dial of Destiny is in any way um, what I had in mind for what a successful fifth entry in the series could look like. But my idea for Indy 5 
um, was to kind of make a much more stripped back, much less bombastic version of Indiana Jones, where he actually is able to focus more on like the archaeological elements of the storyline because indiana jones is an archaeologist right and there's always the joke that actual archaeology is so much more boring than what you see in the indie movies that he's really more of like a tomb raider in the indiana jones series than an actual archaeologist i thought it would be cool given the fact that the dude is fucking 80 years old now and clearly not capable of being an action hero i was like well why not make an actual it's still an adventure movie right it can still have supernatural or religious elements or whatever like the other ones but instead of having all this bombastic action scenes and adventure and all that crap like pare it back a little bit strip it back let's actually see indiana jones doing some archaeology with maybe one or two action scenes in there and you know perhaps a younger cast member doing the brunt of that sort of work i actually would love that right because i think that some of the best elements of the original three movies are the archaeological elements when indy's in the classroom teaching when indy's actually doing archaeology stuff i love those elements of the movies um and i think it would have been cool to see a fifth movie in that regard where it's like a it's like a mystery investigation almost like a sherlock holmes but with archaeology right something like that now obviously they probably were never going to do something like that because they have to have a big you know bombastic spectacle and it has to you know scratch that action itch that everyone has when they go into these movies um but that was my idea for how they could have successfully make a fifth indiana jones film given the aging at, you know given how old harrison ford is um what do you think about that idea alex not that that's where they went i think it's a cool idea but again you have to understand that like you would literally get a bunch of audience reviews being like there's no action in this movie there's no action. I wanted an action movie. I paid 15 bucks for an action movie. This is just a bunch of archaeology bullshit. Um, and as J.R. Jr. said, the simple fact of some butthurt man children expressing their opinion is the farthest thing from an honest indicator of reaction to art. But that's the problem. That's the problem that we have is that we're reacting to the that studios are beholden to these dumbasses on on Rotten Tomatoes audience score. One of the dumbest things, I don't know if they still do this, but one of the dumbest things that Rotten Tomatoes ever did was they did uh, they had like the audience they have like an audience you know how they have critical reception, now they have audience reception and they have like a consensus, an audience consensus. That's bullshit. Like like a lot of people on the Rotten Tomatoes and the IMDb reviews are toxic and I don't think should be trusted by any filmmaker. Honestly, if any filmmaker wants to know, I mean, there's obvious, there's some toxicity in Letterboxd too, but I think Letterboxd is probably the better indication of oh, what yeah. an audience thinks. Either way, um, I'm still looking forward to the Dial of Destiny. I'm still going to see it on opening day. I'm a lifelong Indiana Jones fan. It's literally it was my favorite series of all time as a kid. And I still absolutely adore the original three movies. I think they are three of the greatest action adventure movies ever made, if not the very best. Um, so I'm super excited for this, regardless of the negative reviews. Although it does really hurt to see it getting those negative reviews because I was really hoping that it wouldn't. And I was really confident in james mangold as a director here so who knows maybe i'll come out here with a hot take and be like this movie's a fucking masterpiece the critics missed the point um let's hope that's my reaction and let's hope that i don't end up agreeing with the critics like i said i'm still excited 